In this video, we will talk about components inside Fusion 360. But before getting there, let's see the same model in Tinkercad. So this controller we've been working on um, is an enclosure for a micro bit. And if we take a look at what has been done here in Tinkercad, there is one group for the micro bit. I'll just turn it off so we can see the rest of the things. Then there's two popsicle sticks that we use to basically lock the the micro bits on the enclosure and they are a group but they are obviously separate objects inside a group and I will turn them off and then all the rest is the enclosure which is a group that contains a box, uh, another box that's subtracted from the previous one, two subtractions for the buttons, uh, a couple of other subtractions for the contacts, and uh, two half cylinders that uh, help to, to become the grips for the controller. So basically, three groups inside Tinkercad. Let's turn everybody on. And uh, when I do send to Fusion 360, it's gonna show me the model in Tinkercad it takes a little time just to understand what is there and what can be sent to Fusion. And then if you have Fusion installed, which I do, you just say open in Fusion 360, which will launch the process into Fusion. Once inside Fusion 360, what we get is the same geometry, but native to Fusion. That means, as we talked in the past, that these are solids. Those are B-Rep solids that, for example, have the, have a sense of this is an edge or this is a whole face and not just triangles like in a mesh. Now, I have four bodies here. Each of these bodies represents something from Tinkercad. The first body is the full enclosure. The second body is the microbit. And then there's two separate bodies for the popsicle sticks. Now, these two were a group inside Tinkercad, but when you take bodies into Fusion 360, Fusion 360 concept of body means that everything has to be connected. So if within one group in Tinkercad, we have two objects that are disconnected physically, then they become two bodies inside Fusion 360. Now I am going to create my first component. So I go to new component, it's going to be internal, meaning that it lives inside the file and it's not an external reference. I will select a body, could be, for example, the, the enclosure itself. You can select it from here or from here. And I just lost it from this list because now it's component one, which it's here, right? So I can now rename it. I could also turn the name on the previous dialog, whatever you want enclosure is your name and I'm going to do the same for the others so I'm going to now say select one body here for the for the micro bit and this becomes micro bit and last but not least the sticks now when I do the sticks I'm just going to do one because if I select both, it's going to create two components and I want those two to be in one component. So in this case, I'm going to just call this sticks and it has one body. And then I'm just going to drag and drop the other body inside this component. So like this. So now it's here. So now my model is completely organized. I have enclosure. So let me just turn it off, visibility, microbit, and sticks. Why do I do this? There are several examples of reasons why this is a good thing to do. When you go to animation, you will, you will be able to work with the components themselves without having to select too many things. Um, in, in, in other workspaces in Fusion 360, you need components to be able to operate. In general, what I would say also is that it helps on, on a lot of other things. So for example, if I turn history on in here, as I said also before, uh, by default, when you bring something from Tinker into Fusion, it has history off and history is a really good thing to turn on. So I'm gonna click capture design history. So now I have the design history here. And um, let's say I start working on enclosure one and I'm going to do a fillet on this side just make it look good like two millimeters awesome 
and I'm gonna do a fillet on this side. And by the way, I'm sort of lazy, so once I start doing this, I can say just do it the same as this one. Okay, two, here it is. Imagine that if you keep doing a lot of these operations, you're gonna have a long timeline here. Now, these two things were added on the on the enclosure. So if I activate, which is when I hover the, the, the component, if I activate component, the other ones get into a ghosted representation, so they are not they are not editable, and I can only work on enclosure one, and uh, the timeline doesn't change a, a bit. But if I now activate microbit one, what happens here is that I lost the two fillets because the two fillets belong to the previous um, element, but now since what I have activated is microbit one, it doesn't show them in the timeline. So if you have a huge timeline with a lot of things happening on all the different components, when you activate a component, you only see the things that belong to that component, which makes things much easier, much easier for you to operate. Thank you very much.